Hi, Fernando. Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you today? I'm doing well. Can, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Perfect. Um, just one note, Joe. There's it basically started today. There's work, you know, construction work going on above me. It's quiet right now, but I'm really hoping they don't start drilling like in okay. the middle of this. All right. All right. We'll keep we'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got a great story, man. I appreciate you taking a minute out. Where are you coming out of? I'm actually I'm originally from Ecuador, from the Galapagos, but I'm based right now in Santiago in Chile. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. So before we get into Galapagos and your work and your history, I want to know, how did you survive the last three and a half years of the global pandemic? How did you get through it and how did it change you? Well, it was rough. Um, this is a family business, so um, it was started by my parents. So we're all deeply you know, invested in this. It's basically all we do. Uh, and here I'm talking about my two parents and I also have two brothers an older brother and a younger brother. Um, and it, it was just a, a rough time for us. You know, we didn't know what was happening, just like everybody right at the beginning. But some industries were, it was easy to adapt. For us, it was impossible. You know, the, the borders were closed and uh, we just had to basically, you know, put on the seatbelt, uh, figure out what we could do. Uh, like we had to unfortunately let go of a few employees um, in the process with the promise, you know, that we would rehire them as soon as things got better. Uh, thankfully, that happened a lot more quickly in Galapagos than in Patagonia. We also have some products in Patagonia. Um, down here, Chile was closed for basically two years, whereas Galapagos was um, about one. Um, but, you know, we... We got lean. Um, I would say, you know, as you know, hard as this may sound, but actually the pandemic did us a lot of good in the sense that we came out a lot leaner, a lot more efficient. Uh, the people that stayed with us were super efficient. Um, we have less people now producing the same. Um, so I guess it was a matter of adapting. And, uh, you know, myself as the marketing director, we adapted our messaging to speak to the reality of the situation. Um, and slowly but surely, we started attracting customers and we started operating even before the vaccines came out. We operated, I believe it was about eight cruises before uh, the Galapagos were vaccinated. So that was a challenge uh, with not a single case there, but we had these uh, you know, this house where we quarantined the crew for 15 days, then they would board and then they would switch. It was a, a mess. But if anything, our sanitation uh, protocols and um, basically, you know, our, our hygiene standards and our emergency protocols are much better off because of it. So let's get to the heart and soul of what you exactly do for a living on a daily basis. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day. One of the kids looks up and says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? Excellent. Well, that's a, an excellent question. And um, the way I'd like to put it is we change people's lives through travel. Uh, so what we do is we offer these unique transformational experiences in these one-of-a-kind destinations that really offer something extremely unique. So in the Galapagos, for example, it's the chance to see animals as they once were in the when when basically when animals rule the world that's the way animals have stayed in the galapagos and so you know to be able to experience that in today's world when probably most of the animals the wild animals that we see today have learned to fear us um in galapagos not that way so that thing automatically changes people's view of, of nature and then in a place like patagonia it's you know, seeing landscapes that truly make you cry. You know, it's these vast landscapes, these extreme contrasts, um, these just uh, amazing formations that you find in the extremes of the earth um, in places like Alaska, Patagonia, the poles. It's just very, very different. Um, 
so that's what we do. You know, essentially we change people's lives through these really amazing travel experiences. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? I wanted to be a marine biologist. Okay. And um, I, I would see my parents go out on scuba diving trips and bring back, um, you know, photos and I would see books and I just absolutely love that. And although I never became a marine bi biologist, I actually did start that. That was the start of my, you know, college education. But then I figured when when they had me take, you know, biochemistry and physics and all these sciences that I just really like nature and diving. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, being in the family company allowed me to make the most out of that love for for nature and, and really show it to people. And so I was still very much involved in um, a lot of the, the scientific research that goes on in Galapagos through Quasar and the different foundations, but never became a marine biologist. But um, nevertheless, I did remain close to to nature, you know, from since I graduated. So you're living your dream. I am. I am. I love, I'm the marketing director for this company. I love this company. I love the destinations. I love to travel. Uh, um, I, I like to tell people, you know, when I'm in the middle of uh, a glacier in Patagonia or in Galapagos, you know, snorkeling with sea lions, it's just another day in the office for me. So, <laughs> you know, what's interesting about the Galapagos is that that, that really is a universal symbol of the research that Charles Darwin did. And it really does get to the beginnings and the etymology of us as humans. It's just, the beauty has to be stunning there. Like kind of talk to me a little bit about the importance of that notion. Cause when people hear Galapagos, I think they instantly associate it with Darwin and research that's fundamental to our, the way that we think about life on earth. Exactly. Uh, so, I think the best way to describe that is, you know, regardless of whether, you know, you're very religious or you're into science and evolution as you think, it's impossible to deny evolution when you go to the Galapagos. The fact that you're seeing, um, you know, a reptile like the marine iguanas, that uh, depending on where, you know, you landed, like if you landed in Guayaquil, which is one of the cities you have to you, you first have to fly into mainland Ecuador before flying to the Galapagos. You see the ancestors of these iguanas, of these marine iguanas, which are the, the regular sort of the green iguana that maybe most people are used to. Now, these iguanas floated to the Galapagos millions of years ago, um, and they did not have the plant life that they used to feed on in the continent. So they had to learn how to feed themselves, and they found algae near the shores, which they started to eat and, you know, maybe in drier periods, uh, that algae was a little bit deeper. So they had to learn how to swim. And eventually they adapted to the point that they are incredible swimmers. They can dive underwater for about 30 to 40 minutes to the point where their heartbeat almost stops. Um, and, and because they've been underwater so long as they feed on this algae, and then they go back up being reptiles, you know, they're cold blooded. So they need to warm up with the sun and just this adaptation that's really impossible. You put one of those green iguanas from the continent in the cold Galapagos water, it will die, you know, in a day or two. And these guys just have survived for a million of years with an adaptation that is extremely unique. Um, another example is a, a bird that basically forgot how to fly. Um, the cormorant that you find in many areas of the world um, arrived to Galapagos, probably flew there. And because of the lack of predators, it had no need to fly. All its food was in the water. So it would swim. It became an incredible swimmer and its wings basically atrophied. And now there are these little stumps that won't do anything. The bird can't fly because it never needed to. And so when you see these things, and when, if you live in a place where you can maybe see the regular former until you have iguanas in your backyard and you just see how these animals have evolved. It's truly a magical place. And, and it's really, you know, what captivated Darwin's mind, you know, centuries ago. For sure. So who's been kind of a hero for you in your life? Um, Jacques Cousteau, for one. 
yeah. I followed him from, you know, since I was very little. Um, his love for for science, for um, exploring the oceans, that to me was always absolutely amazing. I've had the the fortune of actually being able to go on certain trips with his children and his grandchildren. Um, and so that was one hero. And then I would say the other one would be my parents, both of them. The audacity that you have to have to have started something like Quasar in 1986, when if you can imagine, there was no electricity in the Galapagos. So you couldn't have freezers you know, to have the food. Basically, everything was shipped from the continent. There was one flight out to the islands, and you had a fleet of ships operating there where if you had a mechanical breakdown, it was a total nightmare. And so the fact that they got this company off the ground, that they were only the second company to actually be operating in the Galapagos, because we have to face it today, there are over 88 ships uh, in Galapagos, because it's a great business, because it's easy to operate there, because you can, you know, fix boats and hire people, and there's food readily available to stock the ships. Back then, it was a complete nightmare, but it was their dream and their idea that the only way to protect these islands was through conscious and sustainable tourism. And that's what they did. And that's what Quasar has been doing for the last 37 years. So the fact that they had that vision um, such a long time ago, and they put all that effort, to me, makes them heroic, at yeah, least in my sure. mind. For sure. Well, you you mentioned Jacques. Is there anybody alive on the planet right now that you would love to to meet and talk to? Somebody that is inspirational or that you just find interesting? Uh, there's this guy. His name is Enrique Salah. That I've actually had uh, email conversations with him. He is to me kind of like a, a today's Jacques Cousteau, a yeah. guy dedicated to the conservation of the oceans. Um, public speaker, very heroic in the sense of all that he's doing for the conservation of our oceans. Uh, he would be somebody that, you know, I'd admire and have, uh, be very happy to meet. You know, it's interesting. The ocean is such an uncharted place. As much as we know about it, there's so much more that we don't. Are you always fascinated at the giant squids and the things that kind of come to life? How does that work for you? Yeah. Yeah, if you think about it, you know, the fact that I think we've explored 3% or 5% yeah. of our oceans and, you know, the other 95% remains unexplored. The things that live, at least in the depths especially, is fascinating. You know, some of the things wash up, you know, on the shores and we have an idea of these animals. You see these humpback whales that are known for diving very deep to eat squid that come back with these huge lacerations of these beasts that they are fighting with underwater. Yeah. Um, it'd be amazing to, to go even deeper and, you know, just explore those waters. And then Galapagos, they're finding stuff all the time. They're, they're discovering new species, um, you know, and not at incredible depths. So to me, it's fascinating. The exploration of the ocean is truly fascinating. So what is your motivation every day to wake up, to do your work, to help people see the beauty and the magic of this land. What is that for you every day? Yeah, you know, one of the things I've, as the company has grown, um, you know, you, you start hiring people to help you in different areas. But one of the things I've never stopped doing is actually reading the comment cards that every single guest from her trips fills out. And when I read their letters and their comments about you know, the, the transformation that has happened on their trip when I read uh, and see how important these trips are for them, how their family relationships have improved, you know, strengthening family bonds, marriages um, uh, in, our, in our family trips, you know, the, the bonds between parents and kids. Um, when we're able to change people's lives and they're really happy, um, that's what motivates me to wake up every day because it is a complicated business you know we are running these floating hotels that break down all the time where help you know the electrician is not available you know with a, a call sometimes these ships are in the middle of nowhere you know maybe three days from port um so it's a complicated operation sometimes we wish things were a little bit easier but in the end 
you know, knowing that we change people's lives in, in such a way um, is really what makes a difference. And, and you can see that, you know, if you read the reviews that people are leaving for Quasar, it just, that shows you, um, you know, the kind of experiences that we're delivering. And as I like to say, you know, the Galapagos always are putting on a show, but only a handful of companies can give you front row seats. You know, it requires great expertise from the guides. Our guides, for example, have at least the, the one who is least experienced has been guiding Galapagos for 15 years. The one with the most, I believe, has been 30 years. So these are guys who they're showing you their home. They have a passion for what they do. Can you imagine guiding in the same place for 30 years? Yet our guests tell us, you know, that every time they're talking about a bird or a different animal, it's like they're talking about it for the first time, like they have seen it for the first time themselves. So they're truly special people. Um, so when you combine that with the right ships and the right operation, that's truly where the magic happens in a place like Galapagos. So you've obviously seen this a lot and you've seen a lot of creatures that we, most people will never lay eyes on. What's the most fascinating creature or story that you've run into there? Um, probably the, the most fascinating thing I have seen is um, a group of orcas playing with a sea turtle. And, um, you know, you've seen those documentaries maybe with the orcas playing with sea lions. Yeah. Um, and this happens a lot in the Valdez Peninsula in, in Argentina. Um, but it had never been documented, you know, to see orcas pretty much juggling with sea turtles. And we were able to film this on one of our trips. We actually uploaded it to our YouTube channel and became, it's today still the most viral video in all our YouTube collection. And seeing that and seeing these animals, you know, orcas are just incredibly smart. And the way, you know, they were, they were literally playing in a, in a, in a group. It was like one team versus the other who would throw the turtle farther. Um, and it was, you know, it's a little bit cruel well, when you think about it, but it's it's the way nature is. And when, when you can see that, you know, in front row seats, it's uh, very incredible. So you've talked about all the letters and responses and cards that you read. What was what 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 has been one response that you got that kind of stands above the rest that really always puts a smile on your face? There was um, this lady who her dream was to visit the Galapagos, and you know we. The Galapagos is an expensive destination, um, and we run higher end cruises, so these are not cheap tours. Um, but she, basically, the last investment she made was uh, to go on this trip, and she had terminal lung, terminal lung cancer. And the letter that she wrote it was about two or three pages about how she could not have imagined spending, you know. Her, her last few, she actually passed away about two months after the trip. Um, and we had a crew member dedicated to helping her because, you know, she was quickly out of breath in the excursion, but she wanted to do everything, even to the point where our onboard doctor was like, I don't know if you should do this. And she, she had a big pink shirt that said cancer sucks. And she wore it every day to all of the excursions. And so the fact that um, the place was everything she, it, you know, she thought it was the fact that our our crew and our dedication to making that trip the best in her life, you know, lived up to her expectations and that she was truly happy. And I think at peace with what she had done and lived through in her life, um, that was that was truly magical. We we have a printed photo of her in the office and she remains one of these heroic passengers that we've had over the years. So of all the things that you've done and accomplished and seen in your life, what are you the proudest of? Um, I think a couple, um, and both have to do with the, the survival, you know, it is when things get really rough, um, often the easiest answer or the easiest course of action is to just quit. Um, we had two accidents one year away from each other back in 2010, not, there were no casualties, but it, two ships actually ran aground. And having 
survive that, you know, having gone back on our feet um, after the company, and this was um, Joe right after the the financial crisis. So things were bad, you know, on top of the financial crisis where the company was not in a good economic position uh, and we had these accidents, the fact that we survived that, um, and not only did we survive, but we actually made it out better on the other side. And we've been fortunate enough to win Travel and Leisure's award for the best intimate ocean cruise line for the last six years. Thinking about that time and thinking about today, I think that is truly um, something that I think as a family, we're very proud of because at one point we, we literally said, you know, this is it. We, we need to start doing something else. Um, but, but we stuck to it. And again, you know, it's these smiles and these comments from the passengers um, that keep us going. You know, we, that happiness that we, that the Galapagos have brought to our family, we know we can bring it to other families and that's what keeps us going every year. So Fernando, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, all of the customers you get, but at the end of the day, you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Um, that's a great question. I'd like to think that I was put on this earth to do something big. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, something, you know, or for me to throw laurels on myself, like be president of, of Ecuador or the United States or anything like that. It's really a transformation where we, I, sorry, impact enough people's lives in the things that I do every day. So I'm fortunate enough to have to be able to do that every day when it comes to travel. Uh, but also, you know, the responsibility that we have in our destinations, helping a place like Galapagos, you know, helping wildlife. Uh, Galapagos has a huge problem with introduced species. The fact that, you know, we've been able to help the different foundations there, that we've been able to um, make the right connections with people that can really make an impact, um, that we're able to educate our guests at they not only, you know, check Galapagos off their bucket list, but that they actually become ambassadors. Um, I think that part, you know, truly makes a difference. So, yeah, I think going. this is an easy sell. So if anyone out there wants to learn more about taking a trip, learn more about your company, you, anything about your world, where do they go? They can visit us on our website. It's Quasar, Q-U-A-S-A-R-E-X.com or QuasarExpeditions.com, either one. Um, the same handle at QuasarEX on Instagram, Quasar Expeditions on Facebook. They can find us there. They can browse our website, look at photos, videos, um, everything they need to know about us as the family, about the destinations and about what we do and how we're different. They can find it there. That's wonderful. Fernando, thank you so much, man. I'd, I'd, I'd love to hopefully at some point in my life dive in there. That would be absolutely mind-blowing. So thank you so much for opening up. Thanks for your story. You're welcome, Joe. And you're welcome anytime. And, and I think the magic of Galapagos insulated us from the outside sound. I think we made it through okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's that vibe. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. I appreciate it. You too. Take care, Take Joe. Care. See Bye. you later. Bye-bye.